And we'll get back with Mr. David Bradley. Mm. I wish he was here, because I... He'd be ace. He was ace. And it's great to be on set with Mr. David Bradley, a genre icon that will be familiar to many Starburst readers. Um, we'll start by talking about an adventure in space and time. Your portrayal of William yeah. Hart now, it's gone down like a storm with the oh, readers. That's they that's loved it, that's and that's uh, that's me as well. I do, they, this is actually better than the anniversary show. Oh, it's, wow. It was, it wow. was fun. Yeah, because yeah. um, well, you, be, you just became him. It was well, uncanny. Yeah, well, I, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm young enough to remember him, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. the first Doctor Who's, and yeah. and, uh, and subsequently seen a lot of uh, a lot of Hartnell's work in like Brighton Rock and uh, yeah. films, and uh, I, I just uh, admired him as an actor. And um, when Mark Gatiss uh, first approached me, um, he was actually at the Queen's Jubilee flotilla, and it was chucking it down with rain on the Thames mm. and we were by the Thames watching and he uh, came up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder and I'd, I'd met him briefly before yes. and uh, he just said how would you like to play the first Doctor Who which I'm now writing mm. so I just it's yeah. a no brainer <laughs> oh yeah yeah absolutely and uh, the more I read about him and, and, and saw old clips of um, the, the original Doctor Who's and uh, I met his granddaughter, Jessica, mm -hmm. who is now an agent, yes. and she gave me a copy of his um, uh, biography yes. called Who's There? Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that so helpful because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just a whitewash job. He, you know, she, she wrote yeah. about him warts and all, and, uh, and, and, and it, 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 suddenly I thought, well, this is a really interesting guy. You know, he had these yes. demons, you know, and he, mm -hmm. he could have... It could be difficult at times, but uh, it could also be very generous. And and, uh, and, and I spoke to William Russell, um, who was in the original cast, and uh, one or two of the others, and their memories of him, you know. And they yeah. said, well, he could be a cantankerous old geezer, but at times he could be so generous and and uh, encouraging and helpful. And well, for me, it was uh, the fact that he was such a versatile actor. Yes. You know, um, and the film The Way Ahead as a war film and and he was he was always different and yes. uh, and I, I just found a lot of his career I could like identify with or you know just and so when when he sent me the script and it went through various various rewrites but the fact that we shot it in the studio in Wimbledon in very similar conditions to how the original was done, yes. with all the they even had a couple of the old big wheelie car uh, cameras yes. and uh, the, the two guys had bought them from like, in the sixties and kept them in storage and, oh, yes. and there. So we a lot of we recreated one of the episodes, the first one, and uh, and shot it on black and white and that grainy. Footage that yes. the originals had, and, uh, and 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 we did it in about three and a half weeks. And it was such a terrific piece of writing, and yes, and um, nobody lost the cool or fell out or anything. We just got on with it, and every day it was a pleasure to come in and uh, step into the shoes of this uh, terrific actor. And, yeah, uh, well, I loved him. I did it justice. It, it yeah. was incredible performance, and and you got. You got some mannerisms of his that that were absolutely um, perfect, and, yeah. and and I will say this: a, the one comment that I've had a lot of of readers and people listening to the radio show, they've been saying that the, you made him extremely likable, but t totally relatable, and not like he was superhuman and like you say he was he had his demons. Yeah. But but you made him very likable, and yeah. and he he was and at the end it, those scenes where he was really realising he was having to leave the show were really yeah, touching. Yeah, yeah. And I would imagine, were those very difficult to get, get through? Yeah, yeah. And of course he was devastated. He said, how can you have Doctor Who without Doctor Who? And yeah. I think that was the first time um, anybody sort of thought of the idea about keeping, like, because you know, we're used to it now with the bombs and everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. How you get different actors playing the same character. Yeah. But him, he, he thought... It would just stop. He said, oh, oh, "My fans won't accept it," you know. But uh, he was wrong. But 
Um, but he, and of course all the, all the subsequent actors playing him have, have created the role for themselves, but he, he, he created it from, from scratch. And, yes. Uh, you know, so. Yes, it's just a shame that you, you didn't get to do an entire episode of, uh, of the, or, re- or a new episode as that. Yeah. Because he, um, he was really good. I mean, uh, would you, if someone approached you in the future and said, would you do an audio drama as, as uh, William Hartnell's doctor? Well, you? yes, I mean, because Mark... Um, Subsequently, found uh, a lot of the old scripts. Yes. And uh, at the time, we thought, well, wouldn't it be great? If, uh, yes. If you could uh, just re- re- reshoot them, it was me as playing Hartnell. I thought, wow. That would be a fantastic idea. Because I did a Doctor Who about a year or two before, uh, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. Yes. yes. And I was in the studio, I was thinking, wow, there's, <laughs> there's the Tazis box in the yes. corner. There's, you know, and, and it's brilliant. And I thought, when it finished, I thought, well, at least I've done a Doctor Who. I that. uh, <laughs> it's this iconic programme, at least that, that's my Doctor Who experience. Oh, and uh, how wrong I was, it yeah, came no, up again. No, you know, it you know. was... As but I felt, you know, it was like... There was a, a terrific sense of responsibility in it, because, because not only of his granddaughter, but his yes. great-grandchildren. Mm. Um, and the, his family came to visit the set one day when yes. we were on it. And... Uh, and they were saying, yeah, yeah they, they nodded with approval at what they saw. And yes. I was so relieved because you, you want to do him, you want to do him justice, you know, mm. the good and the bad, you know. And have, to, uh, have you spoken to his granddaughter since the show aired? Does she? No, she sent me, um, she lent me a copy of the book, and then she 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 sent me a new copy of uh, um, uh, a new a newly published edition of it, and mm. wrote a nice dedication and. Oh, that's nice. And um, got a lovely letter from her mother, um, his his daughter. Yes. And uh, just giving me their seal of approval and said you you caught you caught him perfectly. And it was it was quite a relief, you know. Yeah. Now, as I say to many, the I know the it was all about the anniversary episode with the the other three doctors in it but to a lot of our readers they that was the highlight of that, that celebration yeah oh um, well i'm very honored by that I, I was surprised by the amount on the day it, it aired the social media you i don't know if you're aware but they, it exploded with loads of fans just saying this is one of the best best things we've seen in doctor who for years yeah, yeah. So, well what i what i was hoping was that even people who'd never seen doctor who in their lives would find it as a human drama just interesting great. on its on its own mm. you know? and uh, it seems yeah. I haven't read a lot of feedback because I don't I'm not on Facebook and I don't yes. tweet or Twitter or anything so, but my daughter <laughs> sends me the occasional little thing yeah. yeah look at this dad you know wow. I don't want any of this muck thanks very much I'll have a drink right you the director son yes I'll be out of the cradle the pair of you right let's talk turkey I'm not sure about this. Not sure at all. No? Apart from anything else, I don't want to take on another long run. Had enough of that on the army game. Nearly killed me. Would you like Weekly, to order some bloody rep. Whiskey and soda. Choppy choppy. Yes, sir. Now, whose idea was all this? That fellow from ITV? Sidney Newman, yes. But so many people have been at the birth of the thing, we'd be here all day. Tell me about the characters. Two school teachers. Ian and Barbara. They're intrigued about one of their pupils, a young girl called Susan. She seems to have impossible knowledge for a girl from 1963. So the school teachers follow her home, but home is a junkyard. Yes, yes, yes. Scripts. I need to see scripts. Oh, they're going wonderfully. <laughs> wonderfully. The BBC are really excited about the show. I mean, they're throwing everything at it. State-of-the-art facilities. How do they get about? A flying saucer or something? Ours is a space and time machine that can blend in with its background. Oh, you mean it's covered in invisible paint or something? No, 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 no. It adapts to suit its environment. It gets stuck in one shape. A police box. Police box. How gorgeous would that be? An ordinary 20th century object on the surface of an alien planet. Fantastic. (laughs) And the opening titles are like nothing you've ever seen. Yes. You see, if you point a camera down its own monitor, it creates the most wonderful shapes, patterns, like mirrors, endlessly reflecting, swooping and pulsing like 
butterfly wings. Maybe I could be in them. Just pop in front of the camera, would you, Tony? Let's see how that looks. Oh, Christ, no. That's terrifying. And wait till you hear the music. We're using the latest technology. How did you do it? <laughs> Brian's house keys. What about the doctor himself? He's something like 600 years old. Looks like a senile old man, but he's tough. Tough. Tough and wiry like an old turkey. It's what you do so well, Mr. Hartnell. Stern and scary. But with a twinkle. Trust me, Bill, you're perfect for it. No one will be able to resist you. Do you think so? C.S. Lewis meets H.G. Wells meets Father Christmas. That's the doctor. Doctor who? Mm -hmm. So on a, on a di on a different note, what what was it like doing it? Conversely, the Walder Fay character, Game of Thrones, he, he he was a bit naughty, wasn't he? What he did? Yes, yes. And well, at the time I was doing it, I did the very first, I did one one scene in the first episode. Yes. And, but yeah, I had no idea. I'd never read the books. I didn't know anything about it. No, no. I hadn't read the books. No, no. I, was, I was quite so shocked. You, you had no idea of what you. Yeah. You know, like like the Potters when we made the first one, we had yes. no idea it would go the full. If, if the kids hadn't approved of it, of course, yeah, we, there yeah. wouldn't have been a second one even. Absolutely, no. And no. so I, it was only later I realised, and mm. uh, and when people sent me footage of fans reacting to the Red Wedding, yes. being filmed by their friends, mm. I could hear my voice in the background, and there all this and see all this abuse hurled at me <laughs> from, the, from somebody's sofa. I was in Spain, San Francisco, Australia, wherever. And it was, uh, I thought, wow, this is uh, quite something I'm in here. It was, so. it was uh, from our perspective, it was very, anybody who didn't know it was coming uh, because they changed the title of it and it didn't. Uh, we, uh, me, as somebody who hadn't read it and, and a lot of the readers, it was really quite shocking. And, and um, it was, and like I say, it was, do, do you actually get a kick out of playing a guy doing something that bad, or do you, being the bad guy for a change? Or, I'm, I'm afraid I, I probably enjoyed it a bit more than I should. Should have really. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I just when I saw, you know, because you don't get the whole scripts with yes. that because of the confidentiality thing or whatever. But uh, just as a scene, I thought, well, I know, I know what this is about. I'm not sure why it's happening in the story, but uh, mm. it was just thought, oh, this is uh, this is going to be fun, you know, and, and um, especially when. Um, um, who oh, is it? Um, Will Champion, the, uh, the drummer for Coldplay, he, he turned up on the set. So I want to be in. I, I want to be in Game of Thrones as an extra. Right. I, well, I don't have to say anything. Yeah. I don't even know if, if he wanted to be paid, but he got permission from the band who were rehearsing for their world tour yeah. just to be an extra. And then, of course, he was up in the musicians' gallery, and they gave him a tambourine. Yes. So those <laughs> um, serious watchers who know what yeah. to look for would, would, because he had a quick close-up. Mm. And he, uh, we had a few days with him, and he was just having a great time. You know, oh, yeah. he yeah. didn't have much to do, but he was, he was there, and he, and he got a little close up, you know, as I said. Mm. And um, so it's like some quite high-profile yeah. fans out there who just love to be a part of it. And yeah. He was one of them. Yeah. Well, that's it. You were at the heart of what will be, and it was instantly a classic. That that episode, of, well, not just of Game of Thrones. When you look at big shocking TV moments, that yeah, uh, it took everyone by surprise. And again, social media, our Twitter feed, and everybody else all all around the world, it was oh my god, what's happened? Oh, I can't believe it. And, yeah, um, yeah. Did Did you realise it was going to be that big when that episode? Not really. Out? No. Yeah. No, no. Maybe it was naive of me, but I, I just thought, oh, this is this is a good scene. I'm looking forward to this. And, yeah. And we, uh, I, well, I had this like four page speech, which is virtually him welcoming everybody and trying to remember all his daughter's names and all yes. that. And I thought that's, it's brutal, but it, it, there's something quite funny about it as well. Yes. You know? And um, that's what I like about stuff like that. And you know, it's, it's playing someone who's who seems to be an absolute monster, but he's, he's, he's a human being, you know. And, and for Walter Frey, that's the world he exists in. Mm. And it's, you know, it's, it, it's eat or be eaten, you know, and, uh, and that's how he, yeah. he was a survivor, you know, and he knew that if he, if he was seen 
to let the Starks get away with this snub about um, promising yes. to marry his daughter in order to get passage through them, and then reneging on that deal. Mm. It's uh, it's like big politics now. No, yeah. Nobody, Putin or whoever, you know, they, they they don't want to be shown any weakness. Otherwise, the, their own people won't accept it. He'll be booted out, or he'll yeah, get absolutely. bumped off, or something. So he was just spent his life. In, it's a very basic level of humanity, I know, but yeah. it's like you know, it's survival. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lord Walter, Lord Walter, enough. Let it end. Please, he is my son, my first son. Let him go, and I swear we will forget this. I swear it by the old gods and you. We will take no vengeance. You already swore me one oath right here in my castle. You swore by all the gods your son would marry my daughter. Take me for a hostage, but let Rob go. Rob, get up. Get up and walk out. Please. Please! And why would I let him do that? On my honor as a Tully, on my honor as a Stark, let him go, or I will cut your wife's throat. I'll find another. And we've done that too, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, that strain. Oh. Which uh, it's currently on at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. The second yeah. season. Yeah. Uh, I've only seen the first season so far. I've not caught up in the second yet. Well, I haven't either. Yeah. I mean, because I've been recording it. I've seen the first two. And uh, uh, to me and to the others in the cast, we, we feel it's, uh, it's stepped up the... Uh, Raise the bar a bit, you yeah. know, and it's got more interesting, more new, interesting characters coming in. And uh, in fact, I'm going back to Toronto uh, at the end of November for Series 3. So yeah, exactly. we were pleased um, uh, it was picked up again. You know, so, yeah, because uh, a lot of them getting dropped now, so it's. Uh, that's right, yeah. It's, it's, it's right, good, yeah. To, good um, to get another season. So yeah. we, uh, we, we were out in LA promoting Series 2 when they announced that. Uh, we were going again, so... Uh, but it's quite an action role. How are you, how are you managing that? Well, I, I'm kind of relishing it. It's, uh, it was when I was with the RSC and the National Theatre, we did a lot of uh, Shakespeare histories, you know, but they, they hardly ever put a sword in my hand because they probably knew I wasn't... Uh, <laughs> it's not my forte, but, but I had a really good um, fight instructor on this and, um, and he's... Uh, I must hold the record for beheadings in any series, I reckon. <laughs> if it's the Guinness Book of Records for decapitations, I must be right up there, because I, um, and I, I found it very, it's very cold in Toronto, of course, as you probably know, from like November to April, which is our shooting period. And uh, so, with the wind whipping off Lake Ontario on an all-night outside shoot, when it's 35 below, it was quite, you know, I think, oh, and... Uh, but it was, it was at the time it was quite exhausting but I, I found I, I kind of relished playing an old guy who's leading the pack because he's, um, he's a man with a mission and uh, and the fact that he, nobody believes him at first about what, what's actually going on and gradually people sort of realise this guy's onto something and um the fact that he, he he failed at the end of series one to dispatch the master made him a bit more vulnerable than he had been, and and it, it's it's that thing of he's not he's not the Lone Ranger, he's not uh, Robin Hood, he, you know, he's 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 a full human being who's who's got his faults and he's capable of getting it massively wrong, which he which he did in his assessment of what. Would, it would take to yeah. destroy the master so um, I felt that added a new level to him and made him um, a, a bit more uh, open to self doubt and to uh, to have his claw his way back into the credibility within that small posse of people that yeah. are all 
on the same road to destroy the master. So he had a, a lot to claw back in series two, and uh, I like I like the fact that he he just never gives up. You know, and it's, mm. uh, there aren't many parts of, or characters of, of that age. That's, who, that's uh, what I was going to say. Yeah, it's it, it's good to see somebody of that age in a kick-ass role. Something. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I. I kind of relished that, and uh, I found I had the, uh, some of the, the, the energy and the enthusiasm to do it because it's a great part. You know, yeah, and, yeah, uh, it is. And the fact that it's with the great Guillermo del Toro as well. You yeah, know, he's, yeah, uh, he's yeah. quite an inspiring man. You yeah. know, and he he writes these wonderfully vivid characters, and there are quite a lot of them. You know, and um, um, what with with, with Corey Stoll and me and Maestro and uh, and Kevin Durand. Uh, as part of the gang, we, 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 those two characters are getting closer, uh, Fett and Sitrakian, and I like the way that's going because that's developing into a surrogate father, yeah. um, father-son thing, you know, with, with those two. So I'm hoping there'll be more of that in series three. And, you know, it's, uh, well, it's, it's just a, a great thing to be involved in, and it's something different, and I'm playing. Um, an American, well, a guy who's lived in America, so um, nobody's uh, complained yet about uh, <laughs> the uh, a Yorkshire American <laughs> accent, so I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm getting away with it. You're dodging that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I love it, yeah. Face the truth. The great game is over. I want you to watch it unfold. This season on The Strain. Barnes just released the four survivors. It's not a CDC case anymore. Disease is incubating. We need to shut down this airport so it doesn't spread. As of now, you are no longer involved. Nobody wants to deal with the truth. You're still sick. They're undergoing a metamorphosis. And when they come out the other side, there's something completely different. <laughs> what was in the box? A thing of enormous power and terrible will. He's here. Are you saying this epidemic was intentional, that somebody planned this? I would never hurt anybody! Are you gonna murder everyone on that list of yours? Yes. We're not hunting human beings. They're hunting us. Get the gasoline. The Strain. All new. Sundays at 10 on FX. Uh, well, what, what are your plans for the future? Well, I haven't... Um, I haven't really made any apart from uh, all I'm planning now is that last year when my um, younger son got married, uh, he, he, he said, I'm, I, I want to surprise everyone that I'm going to have a. Because him and his brother are both musicians and, uh, yes. and he, he plays bass guitar and his elder brother George plays, um, plays the drums. So he said, I, I want to have a, a surprise wedding band with a couple of other mates who were really good guitarists. And I said, who's your front man? And he went and pointed at me. And I thought, oh, OK, what do I do? Fantastic. Uh, and so he got me rehearsing 14 old rock and roll numbers. And we did it. And we, you know, and I, I had such a good time. You know, it's the best time I've ever had. And I thought, oh, I'm really... Um, you know, maybe a bit less of the acting, and I really want to be a wedding singer. That's my secret <laughs> fantasy. So that's fun. So we've got a couple of more gigs coming up, and you know, because that's my ear, all that kind of you know, mm. Chuck Berry and uh, uh, yeah. Buddy Holly, and uh, so you are doing some gigs. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, at that's the moment great. we're doing them for for charity to raise money for stuff, but uh, so we're doing it just for the love of it. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what's. That's give me another another little kick, you know, to be uh, passing up all these numbers that I remember from when I was a young young man. Yeah. Yeah. Windows, yes. So uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that that's I, th- a, I think that yeah. should be it. And and yeah, do you, thank you very much for giving us this this time. And oh. uh, yeah, like, as I say, Starburst readers, yeah, you're involved in so many things that all the readers of the magazine are into. You be you got a cult icon with uh, with our mag, so that must be nice. Well, because you do so many, you know, get involved in so many projects uh, over the years, and some get quietly dropped and forgotten. And, mm. But to be uh, in the last two, three years, to, uh, well, especially with after the Potter, you think, mm. um, oh, I'm going to be the, the guy 
who was in Harry Potter, but then yeah. Game of Thrones comes up, and, yeah. and then the Doctor Who thing. Yeah. So you find, you meet different people on the street and elsewhere, and at these conventions, and they're all into these different things. Yeah, it's got a different thing that comes in. That's the last yeah. question. How, how, do, how are you finding conventions? Are you doing plenty of them? Do you yeah. enjoy them? Yeah, I do, I do. And it's... Uh, it, it's it just makes you realise how how many people follow the things that you're in, and yeah. uh, it, you really appreciate it, you know. Because yeah. if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have a job. Yeah. You know, exactly. And, I, yeah. and I've been lucky enough, having spent enough years doing a job, just floating through without thinking about it very much. When I was working as an engineer, uh, and I've I've been spent the last forty seven years doing something that's well, it's still my hobby, you know, and I'd, mm. even if I wasn't uh, doing it as a profession, I'd, I'd still be, uh, I'd be doing the Amdram stuff because <laughs> I still love doing it as much as I did then, so I've been, I've been very fortunate and, and of course to have been in such iconic programs, it's been Absolutely, great, yeah. a real treat. No, that's great. So uh, I don't know what's next and uh, acting wise, but I'll uh, well, we'll after keep the strain, on. I'll uh, need to get into Star Wars. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Broadchurch as well, which yeah, Broadchurch, oh, yeah. Yeah. Broadchurch. Yeah. It was yeah. just that was a great yeah. program to be in, and none of us had any idea the impact it would have, and that people would be week by week um, right, yeah. watching what became what the Americans call a. Uh, a uh, water cooler series where mm. people yeah. every morning meet at work and say, Who do you think did it? and what do you think of last night? Yeah. You know, so, so, yeah. uh, That's so, incredible. So, so, so I'm, just, I'm just going along with the flow. Yeah. You know. <laughs> your, your IMDb page will be uh, explained. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all on. But yeah. no, it's great. Yeah. No, it's, super, it's great. And uh, we, we're just very grateful that you took some time for us today. Oh, no, no, pleasure so, talking nice. to you. Yeah. Thank you. That's safe, Jim. See you, see you again. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye. Tiger Lounge, the home of all things kitsch and retro, and featured in the TV series Life on Mars. Find us on Facebook and Twitter. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. Doctor! Missing artifacts. The brig sent him to look into possible theft. Hardly a job for unit. The third Doctor Adventures. Hello, is anyone there? Can you hear me? Over. Hostiles detected. You're looking very smart. The doctor won't let anything happen to us. Really, he won't. Joe? Can you hear me? What's happening? Joe! Dozens of stone coffins. Notification. A spacecraft is approaching Docking Bay 3. This should only take a few moments. We'll have to compensate for the lack of temporal synchromesh, of course. It's just like driving a car in manual rather than automatic. Doctor, I, I don't mean to sound critical, but that space on the other side of those doors, isn't it? Empty space. Why, right. Good grief. Oh, there's another stone robot! Three moons and an asteroid belt, far too much to ask. Language assimilated. <gasps> what in heaven's name are those things? Those, Mike, are Atto eels. Huge. Very dangerous. That's what the first one said. I think we should get out of here before it attacks us too. You may enter docking bay. According to this, the Earth Empire has arranged a political marriage between the two leaders. Please notify Lady Guerlain that our useless and pointless security consultant has arrived. Acknowledged. Excuse me! Woman with reputation in ruins coming through. Yes, this is Captain Yates. Uh, put me through to the Brigadier, would you? The whole future of this sector of the galaxy is at stake. <laughs> Organic life forms detected. The Delphons. Let's get going. There's no present like the times. Uh... Big finish. Recreating an era. Starburst Magazine, issue 418. Available from a newsagent near you. Or download to your tablet today. <laughs> Time is running out for the people of the Asylum of the Insane. Asylum of the Insane, where madness is the norm. Filmed in horoscope, see thrilling scenes in 3D. Three-dimensional terror jumps off the screen and into your lap. Obtain your free 3D blood shield glasses upon entering the theater. Rated GP, but not recommended for impressionable children. Asylum of the Insane, produced in Hollywood by Maniac. <laughs> St- 
The Speed Shop is a place to discuss, debate and just waffle on about old and interesting motors, mainly, but not exclusively, of the internal combustion variety. We'll have auction reports, buyer's guides, show previews and restoration stories to inspire, excite and occasionally terrify. That's the Speed Shop with me, Steve Berry, here on Fab Radio International. You are listening to Starburst Radio, winners of Best TV and Movie Podcast in the UK Podcasters Award 2015. Unlike Empire Magazine. You are listening to Fab Radio International. And welcome back. We're still awake. To Honest. Starburst Radio, and yes, we are still awake. We uh, that was quite a long interview, that so apologies if you just tuned in and you did not know what was going on. That was but, David Bradley. But I hope you enjoyed it because we enjoyed being with him, he was amazing. Unlike you've never met a guy more unlike is uh, yet like the Walder of Fay character, and then you he meet plays him grumpy and buggers, and he yeah. was such a nice glad guy, he, a lot of fun. He really was. And he couldn't have been more helpful. He was very busy that day, and he may, he bent over backwards to make time and make sure that he he had a good chat. There was more to the interview um, as well, which we'll be able to bring you later at some point. The, yeah. it, but it wasn't about all the general stuff that we're discussing then. There was um, it, it was about a movie. Could you yeah. explain? Yeah, well, what it was. was we, going we, on? we went to the set of a movie that was being filmed. Um, obviously with, with Mr Bradley in it, uh, called Await Further Instructions. Uh, so hopefully when we get the OK to do that later on, we'll, have, we'll do a special with, with a few more of the interviews yeah. and a bit more. We could talk more about the film because it looks fantastic. Well, give him the synopsis because the synopsis blew me away. When you said, oh, we're going to go, did we got a set visit? And I was, oh, OK, what is it? And then you uh, sent me the link and I read the synopsis and I went, oh, yeah, I want to definitely go and, and check this out. Yeah, essentially, it's a, a family that on Christmas Eve, mm. uh, their estranged son turns up with his new girlfriend who doesn't get on with the rest of the family. There's a bit yeah. of friction there There's already. There's a lot of friction, isn't there? At the usual Christmas family thing. Uh, but they wake up on Christmas Day morning and they're, they're trapped in the house by this black su- substance that is covering all the doors, all the windows. They can't get out. Yeah, it's not like a blob. It's like it's, big black panels over everything. It's so like they've been yeah, cocooned. Co- cocooned yeah. in. And mm. they just they've no outside mm. uh, contact other than the television on the static just says stay where you are and await further instructions wait further instructions it's just a brilliant idea it's very like i said to the, the producer director guys is that it, it's very twilight zone yeah very outer limits but uh, the, there's a lot of uh like i said human drama in there but then it gets very science fiction and very yeah. very bit of horror as well i think now but it we we can't give too much away of what we saw mm, obviously yeah. at the moment but, yeah. but it's going to be due out Hopefully, middle of next year for the festival season, and uh, mm. it certainly looks like one to look out for. Yeah, we got spoiled a bit while we were there. Unfortunately, yeah, but, 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 we saw a, we saw a key scene that that, um, and we were lucky just watching the rushes, and we were watching, and, and I was like, oh bloody hell! Yeah, well, we we we, we, uh, we were treated uh, very well on the day. A lovely little studio just outside of Selby. Haunted. Yeah, um, I'm not joking. Haunted. Yeah, and it's. Uh, it was it was amazing. Yeah, it was great. Eye opening day. Used to be a pig farm. That's right. Yeah. And then they've they've took it over. Then, uh, well, it used to be a pig yeah. farm, and then somebody took it on as a acting. Uh, yeah, school academy. academy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he passed away, and it got made into a, a film studio. And apparently, um, that's the guy that's supposed to be haunting it. Yeah, there's so a little say. window that's. Uh, that's got the condensation thing that's stuck there. Yeah. And it looks like it's his well, face. <laughs> what happens, there's obviously some distortion on like the surface of the, that glass. And mm. whenever it does steam up with natural condensation, it does form that skull. Yeah. It's it like was... a skull, isn't it? It's like yeah. a haunted sort of face with two eyes, I think. And and I'm not joking, that's true. It, really, is. it was quite, bonkers, it was, isn't it? It was a fun day and it was great. It was, apart from the... the a train journey home, which was delayed, and then had oh man, the witches alive. of Egypt, if you remember. I forgot about them. It's like do you think they've come you... back from Mexico. I, or I, I they've hope just not. Been, uh... I bloody hope not. I hope they, I hope they 
stop them at the border and go, no, you're staying. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were on their way to Mexico, so they do obviously on this. Um, they, <laughs> obviously, that's the train to Mexico. But, oh, yeah, that that's what get. I didn't get. I mean, I'm assuming they're up from, up from London to wherever, then I'm assuming Not they go... Newcastle, do you not remember? Newcastle, and then what, they're going to wherever they're flying from and they're catching a late station. plane. Yeah, mm. a late plane from... Did they actually take off at that time of night? I think they possibly do. Oh, they might be been staying over o'clock. because they were, they were quite drunk. Oh, God, right. They were... Who does this? You get you get this four of you. So it's like, what, 10 o'clock at night. You're on a train. So you've got the little table in front of you. Now, and you're there. You've got all your silly sashes on and all your party gear and all this lot. You're a bit, a little bit sozzled. So, OK, there there you go. That That's was just one you, though, bit. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, very <laughs> funny. And so they then sit down and then, and then next minute they start... Pop, unpacking this little picnic they've got. So then all the table. You know, and Dave, in fairness, they had everything. Yeah, right? they had little food, glasses and everything. Train food news. Anyway, the... Um, and then they had little portable speakers. Uh, yeah, this is the bit I'm getting to. Yeah. But they pull, then pulled out Lambrini. Right. <laughs> so you've got a bit of Lambrini in the middle, a big bottle of that, which uh, even the little ones are huge, aren't they? And they've got sh- little champagne flutes, yeah. <laughs> So they, they, can ones. you imagine this? So they basically they turn the carriage into like a very noisy, hideous party. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. She gets, she gets these external speakers that are Bluetooth to this phone. Right. So she's there, and they don't now they play and they have the shittest taste in music yeah. ever. I mean, really bad stuff. Even was I was on. allowed to be snobby about it. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, it was, it was fair. I was trying to go to sleep, just have a nod off for about an hour, you know, or half an hour. And, oh, you got it every few minutes they'd change the music it'd be somewhere else it'd be like commercial dance then it'd be the only underlying theme is that it was all shit. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, that's that one great, was it? No. There you go. Wait, Knew we should have drove. It's, it's something to say. Knew we should have drove, but next time you never know. No. Yet, um, yeah, well, we got that. You know, say they picked us up from the train station. It was, a, it was a great day. And, it was and we thank them.